it's still on. Hey, good morning, everybody. We're going to do a quick prelude for you this morning. If you want to sing with us, that'd be great. Uh, so here we go. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, one more time, open the eyes of my heart, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high, to see you high. Lift it up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. This is us, we sing, holy, holy, holy. You are holy, 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 holy. I want to see you one more time. Holy, 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 you are holy, 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 holy. I want to see you one more time. Sing it with us. Here we go. Holy, 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 you are holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to you, those of you who are here and those of you joining us online. And a special welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. Today, we are blessed and grateful to have Jim step in for Jane to preach. As some of you may know, Jane is at home after testing positive this week for COVID. So while she is tired and she really sounds sick, <laughs> talking with her. Her fever has broken, and she says she's well on her way to recovery. So we want to certainly pray for her speedy and her total healing. So thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, very much for your words of wisdom today as we begin our series exploring the Holy Spirit this morning. If you'd like to learn more about faith, please fill out one of the white contact cards in the seats around you and drop it in the offering box during communion. If you are online and interested in more information, please just send a quick note to info at faithgolden.org and Camelia will contact you. And now today, as always, we will be having communion and all are welcome to participate. Those of you worshiping with us remotely, please take a few minutes and get your bread and your wine or your juice ready for communion. The bulletin for today's service 
is available via a link in the email you received yesterday or alternately on our website homepage. You can also access the bulletin by scanning your mobile device on any of the QR codes that you see posted around the sanctuary or on the screen. Now today, our host family is Sherry Yarima. I'll turn it over to Sherry to introduce herself. Hello and welcome. I'm Sherry Yarima with the distinction of possibly being the shortest adult member of this congregation. <laughs> Uh, Myrna might be taught, you know, we're, we, we have to fight for that title, but uh, I am a native Iowan. I was born in a little town about 20 miles from Waterloo. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I forgot to bring my box so that you could see me better. Um, when we when we, I was three years old, we moved to Waterloo. By the way, that's why I'm a Lutheran because my parents were both from more evangelical backgrounds in Southern Iowa. And when they came to Reedland, a German farming community, you were either a Lutheran who went to the high German service or the low German service or the English service. And we've been Lutherans ever since. Uh, I went all through school in Waterloo went to St. Olaf for college because of his strong science program and his strong music program, both of which are very important to me. Then I went to Northwestern for graduate school, decided I liked Chicago and I'd stay around for a while, met my husband. We moved to the Western suburbs. I thought, why would anyone live in the Western suburbs if they can live by the lake? But you know, life goes on. Um, there I taught middle school and high school for 32 years. Um, I loved it. Uh, I love being with people. I love guiding young people to find their way in life. I moved here about 10 years ago because my daughter and her two boys and husband were here in West Arvada and I live about a mile from them. My daughter said to me, Sharon Ray Prince, who lived two do doors down from them, loved their church in Golden. And so Sharon Ray Prince, I think you're at home, but thank you for guiding me here to faith. I've been coming since that first Sunday and you know, haven't missed a beat. Some of you may not see me because I've turned into a snowboard bird. <laughs> Snowboard would be not my thing. <laughs> Um, and so I'm gone from November till near the end of April and I'm back and, and I love it here. I, I love the people. I love the friendliness. I love the mission. Um, I also love music. I <clears throat> sing in the choir when we have one and I play handbells and I'm one of the people who really loves the old hymns. And so when they're there, I, I really build it out, but I encourage you to show your faith through singing. God doesn't care whether you can't carry a tune, just spread your love of him through your song. And that's me. And I guess I'm in the middle here. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. Well, as Sherry and I were talking, we uh, spent our early adult years and all the time that she was in the western suburbs of Chicago, so were Doug and I, so we only lived about 10 miles apart. Didn't know each other, though. So now we start our worship. As the church has for ages, confessing our sin and our need for God's forgiveness as a sign that we know we come broken and with our hearts focus on many things, not always God. I invite you then to join me as we begin our worship today in confession. Spirit of God, you move all around us, but we, but we confess we wave you away so you don't get too close. Holy Spirit, you move among us, but we confess 
We all have different ideas, different ways of doing things, and so your perfectly beautiful harmonies are drowned out by our Kaya discord. Spirit of God, you move within us, but we confess sometimes we just aren't willing to risk ourselves to embrace your radical vision. Deep down, Holy Spirit, we know we need to move beyond ourselves. We know the church needs to move beyond itself. So keep moving, keep moving around us, among us and within us. Keep moving so that we be creators of the movement in the world. Children of God, blessed with the spirit of God in you, hear God's own promise. When we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive us. And God has done just that. As we have confessed, God has forgiven. Let the joy of the Lord, the vision of the Spirit, overflow from within you. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Hey, would you all stand and sing this song with us? And I think you'll notice up on the uh, you'll notice up on the screen there that this says something about a, a hymn. Somebody familiar with this? How many people are familiar with this song, "Spirit of Gentleness"? Anybody familiar with it? How many of you actually think it's a hymn? It's not. It was written in 1976. See, here's the thing, folks. Music doesn't have its label because of when we first heard it. This song Jane asked us to sing today because the words are really important as we think about the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to what you're singing.
Well, one of the ways that we connect and encourage each other here at Faith is through the sharing of God's peace. You are welcome to move around here in the sanctuary. Just remember that this is this ongoing time of COVID. Not everyone is comfortable with the same level of contact. And maybe just going in for the shake or the fist bump instead of the full body hug is for you and that's just okay. Whether you are in person or joining us virtually, you can also share beyond the bounds of the church walls by picking up your phone and texting a message of the Lord's peace to others not immediately here with us. So I say to you, the peace of the Lord be with you. Please share the peace. And now, as we come back together, the children ages three to about fifth grade. Oh, we are. Okay, kids, you can stay here. <laughs> Please be seated. The first scripture for, day, for, for today is taken from the book of Isaiah beginning at the 11th chapter. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. 
and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on heresy. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word. And one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson is from the Gospel of John in the 14th chapter. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Here ends the lesson. All right, so I asked the kids to stay here because I want to give you a opportu an, an opportunity to hear from one of my favorite people. So we're going to watch a video, and so we're going to watch three minutes worth of a video here, and I wanted the kids to have a chance to stay because I think they might like it. So here we go. Can you roll the video? Yeah, see? Alfred, I've got work to do. Consider our game a phone. Okay. So while that's happening, this is important. So pay attention. Look, and we even have people dancing. Dancing right now. Alfred, I've got work to do. Consider our game postponed.
on the making, little frightful man. If that's the way it's gotta be! Alfred, what kind of weapon systems do we have? Well, there's only one thing left to do! What? What are you doing? What I should have done all along! Super suction away! I am that hero! It's okay, that's all right. You can turn down the altar mic a little bit because it's picking up some feedback. Uh, we got enough. I think everybody knows who Larry Boy is now. And now we can actually release the children to Sunday school, but I did not want them to miss the opportunity to dance in church. So congratulations. On... That's good. It's all very, very good. <clears throat> I have to tell you that I, I am a huge fan of Larry Boy. No, not just a little bit, like I truly love Larry Boy. When my kids were little, um, we were huge, huge VeggieTales fans. And, uh, and last night when I was uh, preparing for the sermon and was getting some of this stuff together and I pulled this song up, Hutch came rushing in the room. He goes, oh my gosh, you still know that thing? Like it's, he's almost 15. So like, it's pretty cool that he, he still recognizes that. Um, so as Betty mentioned, my name's Jim. I have the privilege of being a part of the worship team here at Faith. Uh, in terms of, uh, from a background perspective, I, I, I did go to seminary. Um, I was a full-time pastor for a while. So this isn't my first time actually preaching. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for me to dust off some skills that I don't use every day now. And um, I went to school at an, an Episcopal seminary. So if you hear something that sounds a little Anglican, I apologize, I can't help myself. Um, but I did grow up in the Lutheran church. I was baptized, communed, all that kind of stuff, confirmed in the Lutheran church. Um, but I've had an opportunity to serve a number of different uh, types of congregations. But I gotta tell you, I love Larry Boy, man. I do. I mean, I love, I love all of Veggie Tales. Um, uh, Mr. Lunt, I love Bob. I love uh, Pa Grape. I even love those silly little peas. Uh, I mean, I love all of them. But my favorite, it's always, it's always been Larry. Um, and it's because he's a goofball. I mean, that's the truth. The truth for me is he is the hero of Bumbleberg, and he actually hosts a TV show. I don't know if you know that. He hosts his own TV show called Silly Songs with Larry, which I think is fantastic. He just, he just throws himself into all kinds of situations with reckless abandon. Um, he stands up to the rumor weed and all manner of meanness with plungers on his head. I mean, it's cool, you know? Uh, but today, we're actually not here to talk about Larry or Larry Boy. Jane tells me, and I know she's watching because she sent me a picture of her and Micah in a, play, in a prayer moment. Um, Jane tells me that we're supposed to talk about the Holy Spirit, which I'm happy to do, but it's true that I do love Larry. So the Holy Spirit, I mean, who the heck is she anyway? Uh, did that surprise you? Maybe you didn't recall that in Hebrew, the spirit is referenced in the feminine. Who the heck is she anyway? Well, you know, after a technicolor and very funkified, uh, you know, intro by the Veggie Tales, I'm afraid I would probably put you to sleep if I were to start with conversations about the Council of Nicaea, Arianism, the orthodoxy of the Trinity, and I kind of wonder, you know, is that even the best way to begin to understand this important part of the Godhead? Maybe not. So let's take a different tact. So in scripture, we get our first glimpse of the Spirit of God actually at creation, hovering over the chaos. And then the explosion that is all life as we know it happens. In the Jewish scriptures, the Spirit gives power to Israel's leaders and Israel's judges, people like Moses, Joshua, Othniel, Gideon, Samson, and David. And amazing stuff happens. Amazing stuff happens. The Spirit literally rips open the heavens at Jesus' baptism. And then it impels Jesus. And by the way, 
that word um, in the language is actually akin to the violence of vomit him into the wilderness. It's clearly powerful stuff is happening when the spirit is around. And of course, you know, we're going to celebrate this in a few weeks, but at Pentecost, the spirit covers believers in tongues of fire and it radically changes them, changes everyone that the spirit encounters. You know, the spirit, spirit's a bit of a troublemaker. Spirit of God seems to have no respect for order, sameness, or stasis. Ezekiel says it is the spirit that changes our hearts from stone into flesh, which is something much more squishy and malleable and vulnerable than stone. This spirit sounds kind of rambunctious, kind of silly even. So what's the point? I mean, really, why, why the spirit anyway? I mean, I talk about Jesus. I pray to God the Father. I go to church and I participate in potlucks. I mean, you know, most Sundays we greet each other warmly. We participate in the liturgies that we choose to value. And we give our time and our talents and our treasure on some level. We marry, we baptize, we confirm, we commune. And that's all good. We say the Apostles' Creed, which mentions the Holy Spirit. And every now and then we say the Nicene Creed, which gives the Holy Spirit a bit more airtime. I mean, isn't that enough? Why the big deal? Jane, why do we need to talk about the Spirit anyway? Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus of Nazareth came into this world and he died on a cross and he rose again and he's not here. And we don't live in Bumbleburg. News update, 14 people were killed and 39 people wounded in mass shootings in this country last weekend. Texas, Wisconsin, California, New York, North Carolina, and there was another shooting in California this weekend. Right now, racially motivated violent extremism cases are the biggest part of the FBI's domestic terrorism portfolio. Right now, a madman is terrorizing the Ukraine and in that conflict alone, 2.5 million children have been displaced. In the US, as of 2020, there are 407,000 children in foster care. According to the Mental Health Foundation, 50% of chronic mental illness starts before the age of 14. Clearly, someone needs to do something about this and the brokenness in our world. This is not Bumbleberg. But like Bumbleberg, we need a hero. We need a hero. Someone who is brave and wise and strong and knowledgeable. We need someone thoughtful who isn't persuaded by rumors or social media or conspiracy theories. We need someone who is fair and just and will stand for the poor, the minority, the outsider, the excluded. For the love of God, we need someone who will break into our world and destroy the wicked. Hear the prophet Isaiah again. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearances. Nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word 
and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness, righteousness like a belt, and truth like an undergarment. Woo! Okay, great. We can exhale. Scripture says there is a hero. The hero is clearly everything we need. The hero is really all we could ask for. Uh, except, where? Jesus of Nazareth is not here. Why are you, as the scripture says, the believers were doing after Jesus' ascension, why are you standing around staring at the sky? First Corinthians 3. Actually, before I go there, let me just make this clear. The power of that hero, the hero that I just referenced, the Spirit of the Lord, she is waiting to be invited into your life. And if you're a believer, the Spirit is already inside you. And that's what 1 Corinthians 3 says. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Don't you know it? Luke 11, even more incredibly, says this. If you then, listen to these words, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask God? Wait a minute. God will grant this gift to imperfect people? That can't be, can it? So guess what? If you're a believer, you already have an alter ego who, according to Jesus in John's gospel, will never leave you and will guide you in the truth. The same spirit who has been a part of every moment of eternity and through whom amazing stuff happens and who impels us forward, vomits us forward, is in you. And the spirit of the living God is ready to rock and roll. You can even hyphenate your name to girl or boy at the end of it if you want to. So what now? Now we all know because we've learned the song or because we've read the verses that the fruit of the spirit is Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But what does that mean? Does it mean that those things are just for us? Or, as my German mother-in-law would say, Oda, could it possibly be that those are things which the world is supposed to experience because we let the heroic work of the Spirit become alive in us and therefore dwell in the world. Could it possibly be, could it possibly be that those things are not just for us? Could it be that empowered and emboldened by the Holy Spirit, we can be brave and strong and wise and knowledgeable? Could it be that we can be thoughtful, not persuaded by rumors or social media or conspiracy theories? Could it be that we could be fair and just and stand for the poor and the minorities, the outsiders, the excluded? Could our focus on families with children aged kindergarten through fifth grade bring about an explosion of the love of God and Christ in our world? Could it? Could we protect our children from exploitation and loneliness? And could we support parents with wisdom and knowledge that comes from every member of the community? Could we become a place where we are known for our passion for justice for all people, regardless of race, color, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, or faith paradigm. Could we? Could we? Will we? 
I'll tell you the one thing that will stop us for sure from achieving any of that. In his commentary on the Gospel of John, William Barclay says this. He says, the Holy Spirit will not be a gate crasher in your life. We have to invite the Spirit in. In short, what will stop the Holy Spirit from changing our hearts is our maniacal commitment to a heart of stone. An unwillingness to be open to God's incessant revelation and his unending call to go out into the world. A simple decision that says we will not hear God's truth. And we will keep the life and world-changing work of God at bay. Jesus tells his disciples, he tells us actually, that the Holy Spirit will guide us. And it'll tell us whatever the Spirit receives from Jesus. But the question is, are we willing to listen? You know, oftentimes I hear people ask, how can... You know, this, how can you discern what is of the Spirit and what is not? I get that question, actually, a lot. People find out at work and other places uh, that, you know, that I'm a follower of Christ, and then they start asking me these deep theological questions. And I have to tell you, I don't actually think that one's all that hard. We know who the Spirit is, and we know what's of the Spirit because we know who Jesus is. We know, that the, we know what the Spirit's prompting is because we know who Jesus is. Are you being prompted to be mean-spirited? Guess what? It's not Jesus. Are you being prompted to ignore the needs of those around you? That's not Jesus. Are you being prompted to dishonor a community member because they don't look like you? They aren't the same age as you. They have a different set of experiences than you. That's not Jesus. It's just not. Are you more concerned about being right than being love? Because that's not Jesus. Look, here's what I know. We heard, as was beautifully read from John's gospel, Jesus tells us that he will guide us into truth through the spirit. And you know what? That's going to take time. We'll need to grow. And we're going to miss the mark a lot as we learn. But God says that the Spirit will pray with us and for us and through our groaning and our learning and our striving, the Spirit will advocate for and empower us. And the Spirit will never leave us alone. So what are we afraid of? And as a reminder, the world will not get it, get it being us guided by the Spirit. The world will not. So don't expect any accolades there. The last person who followed God perfectly was crucified. It didn't work out so well for him. But think of the possibilities. Imagine your life filled with the fire of world-changing, wickedness-destroying power that ushers in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control into your community. Imagine a church, a church that aches to hear God's guidance and rejects the urge to major in minor controversies, the controversies that divide us, a church that instead follows God's decree to empath empathize with and love all with reckless abandon. So there is a hero, and there's no need for spandex, a Larry Mobile, or plungers on your head. Just the faith to recognize that in you lives the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets and can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine 
through us if we will just open our hearts, if we will step forward and we will follow. We pray with me. God, save us from ourselves. Save us when we are not willing to follow your Holy Spirit's promptings out into the wilderness and towards the identity you want us to have. God, give us courage to trust the one who has conquered much more than rumor weeds, but demons, Satan, and death itself. Open our hearts, God, to your Holy Spirit that we might be made new, made whole, renamed, identified as spirit-led followers of you. Forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, when we have become too complacent, too arrogant, or too comfortable to join you on the life-changing journey you want to lead us through. And we do thank you for being the victorious one who has reached across time and space to provide salvation to the world you have created, walked upon, and loved enough to redeem. Amen. make this a continuation of your prayer. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living hope. Your presence Tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence goes. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are well. Come flood this place to the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I long to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your Nothing worth more than ever will ever come close. No thing can compare to your living hope. To your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of love, when my heart becomes free, the shame is undone. Your presence, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Your glory, God, is what I come to be by your presence, Lord. 
spread your grace. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Come back this place, fill the atmosphere. Your glory, that is what I ask for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Thank you. Thank you to Larry Boy and Jim Boy for their beautiful and meaningful words. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Now here at Faith, we practice open communion. It doesn't matter what your church background is or if you don't have any at all. If you desire the love of Jesus in your life, and want to know him better, you are invited to his table. If you are joining us online, I invite one person to be the communion host, pick up your bread, and join us here in the sanctuary as we read the words of institution. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread. He gave thanks for it, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. At home, I invite you now to pick up your wine or your juice. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks for it, and blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, Take and drink, for this is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we prepare for communion, will you please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So for communion, if you are at home and have a child or someone else who doesn't yet receive communion, 
feel free to offer them a short blessing. Something like, know that Jesus loves you and is always with you. Here in the sanctuary, we're going to have two stations. You'll come down the center aisle where you'll get a dollop of hand sanitizer. The bread will be given to you, after which you'll take a small cup from the plate that is offered. Grape juice is the lighter juice in the middle. Wine is the darker on the outer edges. We also have gluten-free bread for those who need it. Just let your server know. This is also the time that we take our offering. During this time, please consider what you have to offer back to God. The gift of your time, your talents, or financial resources. As you come down the center aisle, you can place your gifts in the basket on the small table. Your bulletin also lists a variety of other ways to give. Now come, knowing that whether you are in person, at home, or joining us from somewhere else, you are communing with all the saints this morning. Let us have communion. Away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself. Is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Give me this word. Nothing could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath, I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. Is not what you have required. You said what you told me. You did it. You did it. I'm going back to the heart of mercy. And it's all about you. All about 
I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you one more time i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i made it when it's all about you it's all about you You may stand. And now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Creator God, we come to you in thankfulness for this beautiful day, this beautiful world, and for all that you provide us, especially the gift of much needed water of life. The land and our souls have been parched, and so we rejoice for the renewal that comes with the water, as well as the renewal which the Holy Spirit brings to our hearts with the living water. Lord, in your mercy, Dear Father, we thank you for the gift of spring, which reminds us of our rebirth through the sacrifice of your son. We pray to be energized to reach out in love to others as you have reached out to us. May all your children know us by our love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ruler of all, help our local, state, and national leaders at all levels of government to guide us with fairness and equity for all. Guide the leaders here at Faith to lead us in this work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, Comforter, we pray that you reach out to all who are in need of healing of body and soul. Reach out to all those people who suffer from the ravages of war, to those who have lost their homes and their homelands, to those families of the 100,000 people who have lost to COVID, to those who have lost loved ones to the senseless violence brought on by hate, fear, and lust for power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, Help us to open our hearts and bring God's love to all your children, regardless of, of their wealth or lack of it, the color of their skin, or their chosen way of life. Help us in the fight for justice here at home and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. 
And just a few announcements this morning. If you have or know of a 2022 graduate, we would love to honor them next Sunday. So please, if you can send information and perhaps a picture into either the office, send it to Camelia, or Pastor Jane by Wednesday, we're going to honor those folks on Sunday worship. And now I'm going to ask Deanne and then Todd to come forward. Y'all know why I'm up here, right? <laughs> okay, so um, says tells you up on the screen, Kids Camp is the week of July 18th. It is looming um, in just a handful of short weeks. School, there's three more days of school, and so it is going to be full speed ahead. Did yeah. you notice you got a big, a big shot over there? I mean, you said three more days of school. I know, I know. Like, uh, we talked about it. In Sunday school, a couple people were sad about school, but um, Jonas was very excited that yeah. school was, yeah. So anyway, okay. But um, the thing I really want to talk about this morning for Kids Camp um, really quickly is the volunteer piece of it. And the volunteer piece of it looks, in, looks like a zillion different things, but we cannot serve 300 people kiddos in this building without the help of our volunteers. And um, one of the biggest ways that people volunteer is to um, uh, be a part of our crew leaders. And you do not have to know anything about teaching kids. You do not have to prepare a lesson. You just have to show up. There's a little bit of training that goes into it. But um, crew leaders are the people that guide our kids through the camp for the week. They guide our kids to the, excuse me, oh, I don't know what that was, um, to stories and music and games and, and crafts and imagination station and all kinds of things. So um, crew leaders are um, very much needed to um, guide our kids through this experience. Um, but if kids are not quite your thing, um, we will need all kinds of help building up to that week, um, uh, putting together supplies, um, uh, building our set, um, putting um, uh, service project things together, all kinds of things. And if that is not your gig, then you can also give to Kids Camp in a number of ways. Um, there is a bulletin board straight out the door that has all kinds of slips of paper on it. You can grab a couple of those and there are items on those, um, Ziploc bags and cotton balls and I, I don't know, all kinds of funky things that we need throughout the week. Um, there's also some financial ways to give to Kids Camp. You can sponsor a kiddo. Um, the scholarship need is a little higher this year, I would say, than it's been in years past. And I think that's um, for obvious reasons, um, you know, just things with the economy, things are a little tough still coming out of the pandemic and, and so forth. So anything you can do to help get kids to Kids Camp, because Kids Camp is self-sustaining through those fees. Excuse me, I am like having a hard time this morning for some reason. <laughs> Um, and then um, Joshua Station kids are going to be coming as well. I was at Joshua Station last week talking to families about our kids camp. And I can't even begin to express how excited they are to be here because they've not been able to be a part of this experience for the last two summers. And what is Joshua Station again? Yep. again? Joshua Station is, our tr is a transformational housing program. Um, it helps families um, transition out of homelessness. It's actually a two-year program, which is really, really fantastic. And so some of these kids get to come to kids camp two and three summers in a row um, back when we were doing it consistently before the pandemic. Um, but we have to rent vans to get those kids here. So there's a financial um, piece of that as well. And so there's a number of ways that you can help us there. And I wanted to share one, one last really cool thing that I found out about a week and a half ago. So Rainbow Trail is um, an amazing place that our kids here at Faith get to be a part of um, and go to overnight camp. And I found out that Rainbow Trail is going to be working really hard to get Joshua Station families to a week, uh, I think maybe like a four day weekend in August for family camp. And yeah, it is, that is really, really amazing. Um, you know, that's a population of kids and people that don't get those opportunities very easily because it's expensive 
um, to be able to participate in those things, first of all, and just, you know, having the opportunity presented to them as well. So the offering that we're going to be collecting during the week of Kids Camp is going to go toward getting those kids um, to, down to Rainbow Trail. So that just is really exciting. So just kind of that ministry just comes full circle and um, the partnerships are just amazing. So anyway, um, as always, my contact information I see is on the screen. Please, please, please reach out to me. Um, if you have no idea how you can help, um, I don't know what my gifts and talents are. Believe me, you have gifts and talents and I can figure out how to use those. Um, so just get a hold of me and um, let's talk. Okay. All right. I can agree. Yeah, I know. All right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Todd Vanderwall. I'm the current council president. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much to everybody who showed up um, last Sunday after church for the, the visioning um, release and feedback. Um, the room was packed. Both classrooms were completely full. We had people who were literally here for the first time at Faith and then those who are, let's say, more seasoned. Um, my table had combined over a hundred years of faith attendance at it alone. So um, fantastic to see to see everybody who showed up. On that note, um, feedback and listening for the visioning is still happening. Um, so please go to Teams, uh, the congregational channel under general posts. We recorded um, what Council and Jane had said, and that's on there. There's a frequently asked questions form, and then most importantly, there's a feedback form on there for you to give your feedback. Um, if you don't do Teams, first, if you don't do Teams, get with Jim or um, Bill Ernstrom. But if you're a hard copy kind of person, um, on the shelf by the office there is a frequently asked questions and hard copy and a green feedback form so please um, fill out the form and let us know thanks will you please rise for the benediction <laughs> always oh, reaching as we go from this place May the wind of the Spirit startle your senses and blow throughout your life. May the fire of the Spirit embolden your hearts and light your way. And may the blessings of the Holy One, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm not a warrior, I'm too afraid to lose, feel unqualified what you're calling me to do, but Lord with your strength, I've got no excuse, Cause broken people are exactly who you use, so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's day. And give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. You took a shepherd boy. You made him a king. So I'm going to trust you and give you everything. I'll be a conqueror, cause you fight for me. I'll be a champion, claiming your victory. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. And give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense, so I can face my giants with confidence. I'm going to sing and shout and shake the walls. I won't stop until I see them fall. I'm going to stand up, step out when you call. Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to sing and shout and shake the walls. 
stop until I see them fall. I'm going to stand up, step out when you call. Jesus, so give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. And give me hope like Moses in the wilderness. Come on. Give me a heart like David. Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. So I can face my giants with confidence. All right, congregation, boys and girls, go out and rock your world. See ya. Bye.